Well, welcome to the second nine weeks. And this is, we're going to jump back into our unit three on functions and graphing functions. And we're going to start with lesson 3.10. So you should have these notes in your journal already. You should have gotten them in class today. And we're just going to go through and fill these out so that we're ready for tomorrow's work in class. All right, so let's get to it. <clears throat> so just a re review, a linear equation is something that can be written in this form. Y equals MX plus B. Okay, that should sound familiar. Y equals MX plus B. <clears throat> you might also hear that be called the slope-intercept form or the standard form, which we learned yesterday or today in class which is AX plus BY equals C. Okay. So just like in your own family, usually the parent is the head of the household and the offspring, you know, uh, they come from parent. Well, in functions, we call the head function, that's the most basic form of any other function, we call that the parent function. The parent function is the most basic form of any function. For a linear function, y equals x is the parent function. That's the most basic function. You have to have an x in there. And m equals 1. On the most basic function, your slope, your slope is going to be 1. So it rises 1 and runs 1, rises 1, runs 1, rises 1, runs 1. That's the most basic line, a slope. And your b would equal 0. Okay, so that is what this says right here. y equals x. So in a y equals x, your slope is 1 because it's like you have a 1 in front of this x here. And your b is 0. There's no plus anything over here. So your b is 0. Okay, that's your most basic function. The parent function is always just y equals x. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to graph the parent function y equals x. So when you have y equals x, your uh, we all we do know that the slope is going to be one over one, and the b has to go through the x-intercept has to go through zero zero. So here's zero zero. We like to start at our x-intercept zero zero. Okay, and we're going to go rise one over one rise 1 over 1, rise 1 over 1, because that's our slope, 1 over 1. So you could see the pattern here, and, and if we wanted to go down, it would be the same line. To the left, negative 1 over negative 1 would still be 1 over 1. Okay, so that would be all the points on your, on this line the parent function y equals x. So I'm just going to graph that line. It goes on forever. That's what these arrows signify. So this is y equals x. Okay. Now we're going to graph y equals negative x. y equals negative x. So here we need, it, we need to understand that our slope in negative x is going to be a negative 1. That means it's either going to be <clears throat> negative 1 over 1 or negative uh, or 1, excuse me, over negative 1, which these you're going to see is the same thing. Your b is going to still be 0. There's no b. There's no plus whatever over here, so it's still going to be 0. So we're still going to start here at the origin, 0, 0. And this time we're going to go down negative 1 to the right 1, down to the right, down to the right, 
down to the right. Or you could do like what this has, up and to the left, up and to the left. It's the same line. Do you see how that is? The same line. So basically it is just the opposite of the first line we drew. And now we could draw this line. Oops. And we could label that y equals negative x. So what changed? What changed? How do these differ? What was it that changed? It was the slope. The slope changed from 1 to negative 1. Semicolon. Therefore, from an increasing function to a decreasing function. So we went from an increasing function to a decreasing function, from a positive slope to a negative slope. All right, let's look down here. Graph the parent function y, y equals x. So we're gonna do that same thing we did first over here because the parent function is what we use. It's the most basic function and it's going to help us um, compare other lines to it, okay? So y equals x, just like we did in the first one here. Now we know what it looks like, if I can get this straight. y equals x looks like this, same as up here. Now we're going to graph y equals 3x, y equals 3x. So let's look at that, that equation. 3 is going to be our m, and our b is still 0. There's still nothing added to it. There's no mx plus b. So it's just an mx plus b. So we're still going to start at the origin. We're going to go rise 3, 1, 2, 3, run 1. Rise 3, 1, 2, 3, run 1. Rise 3, run, run 1. Okay? And if we want to do the opposite, we could fall 3, 1, 2, 3, and go to the left 1. Fall 3, 1, 2, 3, left 1. Because that's negative 3 over negative 1, which is still a positive 3 slope. Okay, so now we could trace this line. Y equals 3x. Okay, so we just did that. And lastly, we're going to graph y equals 1 over 3x. 1 over 3x. So let's see this, what this would look like. Break it down. Put your m first. Your m is going to be m over 3, and your b is still 0. We're still starting it at the 0 origin. Okay, so now we're going to go rise 1 uh, to the right 3. So 1, 1, 2, 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. So now we can go down 1 and to the left 3. One, one, two, three. One, one, two, three. One, one, two, three. Okay, so now we have another line. Okay, so can you see that this is just the inverse uh, slope? This was, uh, the slope was 3, this one is it's one third. So we just flipped it, and this is the difference in the lines. You can see now what the difference in the lines. By changing the slope m, we now know that the slope controls
steepness and so this one wasn't as steep as the green one and direction okay and direction so pause it see if you can go ahead and uh, graph y equals x y equals x plus 4 Ooh, make sure you see here that the m is 1 over 1 but the b is 4 so you're going to start that one at 4 down here your m is 1 over 1 right here but your b is starts at a negative 3 so we're not starting at the origin on these two so make sure you you uh, figure that out so I'm going to go ahead and graph those you could pause it and graph it yourself and then compare it to mine there's three lines we're going to graph the parent function then these other two and then we'll see how they compare okay all right Okay, does anybody see anything that I did that might not be right? Does your line, your two lines look like mine? What did I do differently? Hopefully you were able to tell me that I did not start my line at the right place. I started it at negative four instead of a positive four. Did you catch that? All right, we have some some good math loose here. We were trying. We had to start it at a be a positive four. So this is not x plus four. This is actually x minus four. Okay, did you catch that? I want to see if you get it. All right, so I have to redo my plus four line. Good job if you caught that. I'm going to do that one in green. And then lastly, I'll with my light blue, I'll graph the one that starts at negative 3. So it's just going to be just a hair above that first line I drew, that wrong one I drew. That hopefully you caught my mistake too. Seeing if you're paying attention there. Okay, don't just always follow the teacher. Think for yourself. Oops, y equals x minus 3. Okay, so your, your line should look like this. By changing the y-intercept b, we now know that the y-intercept uh, y intercept shifts the function f of x up or down. Up or down. Because we start with this parent function here, and then we went x plus 4, that shifted it up 4, and x minus 3, that shifted it down 3. Okay? So that y-intercept, when you change the y-intercept, it shifts it. So we are going to do the back, in, or the other page in class tomorrow, this page, because you have to use your graphing calculator to do the rest of this and we're going to talk about this in class before we do our homework for tomorrow but make sure you're clear on how we got these lines graphed the different parts of the lines the m which is the slope and the b the y-intercept and how you start and graph a line okay make sure you're clear on that and the difference between if you were to change your y-intercept how that changes your parent function line and then if you're changing your x 
how that changes your line from the parent function. All right, have a good night.